Congratulations. What we're going to do here is we are going to uh, we're going to look at how did we make that. So first off, the first event had to be, hopefully you figured out, was the red sand. And the reason you knew that was because it was on the bottom, right? So then next up had to be our blue sand because it was on top of the red. Then we had to do our purple sand because it was on top of the blue. And then our yellow sand because it was on top, oops, on top, there we go, of the purple. Which finally left us with those pretty designs, right? We had those pretty designs that were made by those lines and we could tell that came last because it disturbed all the other colors that were in there. And hopefully also what you saw on that sand tube was the gravel kind of seemed to land on the bottom. It had some sand and water kind of mixed between. Uh, we saw most of those layers in that sand tube went horizontally, unless we held it just right. We could make vertical layers, um, and that's because of gravity, right? So that one makes sense. Uh, we also saw the water was dirty, and if we flipped it really fast, we could get the stuff to land on the top and just kind of hang out up there. So it was kind of cool. Um, and we knew which layer came first and which layer came last because we knew the layers on the bottom had to be there first in order to get in there, right? I couldn't have stuck a layer in there before I put something else. Now, we know from playing with the sand tube, though, that's, that's not always true because we, if we flip the sand tube over, we could get the layers to land on top. So you can kind of imagine like a rock tumbling down a hill um, when after a rain um, that might not land on its bottom it might land on the top and so sometimes there are going to be layers that don't land um, on the right order um, this idea that you guys had already figured out from our puzzle was the is called the law of superposition you're probably going to want to star or mark that one in some way shape or form if you're taking notes at home um, because this one's really your bread and butter it's the one we use most often and the layer on top of another layer is always younger than the layer below it. And so if we flipped it over, if it rolled down a mountain, then it wouldn't, may not happen. So when we look at a layer like this, we can see layer one had to come first, then layer two had to go on top of that, then three, then four, in order for those layers to look like that. We also saw from our sand tube model in our colored tube or our colored container that all the layers went horizontally. We already know this from gravity. Um, so sedimentary layers of rock are always deposited in a, if I can get my cursor to behave, it must be over here, a horizontal direction. Um, the exception to the rule is that the layers are deposited on a hill or a slope. There it is, that's the one I'm looking for. Uh, that is greater than 30 degrees. So you saw in the other video that we tilted it just so and it um, and it made that vertical layer. So what this looks like in rocks though is not so much a vertical layer but we get this bump. So what happened here was the layers were laid down like they are in these nice flat layers up here but what then happened is they get folded. So layers A, B, and C get laid down and then this fold comes later. There's some sort of upheaval or push um, that comes from the bottom. So uh, that uh, is what makes that hill. And then um, did all the layers reach the edge? Either or both of those answers are correct. You could say yes, you could say no. On the bottle, yes, they all went to all the edges. Um, but on the sand tube, sometimes not. Sometimes you ran out of one kind of material or another before it actually uh, finished through. That idea that about layers reaching the edge is called lateral continuity which means layers will continue until they reach an edge or they run out. So um, if you think about probably your flooring on the floor, if you look down, you'll notice that your flooring goes all the way to the edge of the room or until your parents were like, and we're gonna stop right here. Um, sometimes, like in my bathroom downstairs, we have not finished it and we ran out of tile. So if you look way back in the back corner, there's a little chunk that's missing. Um, so we ran out of tile. Um, and so the layers continue until they reach that edge of that room, 
right? Um, if you're a if you're into football, lateral passes go sideways. So this mean, literally means sideways continuous. Um, so what that looks like here is here we have this lovely uh, river valley right here um, inside this rock layer A. So B is showing lateral continuity and that it keeps going until it reaches the edge of A. So does C, so does D. One of the ways you can see that is to look for a Z shape. See how we can kind of see a backwards top of a Z right there? That will tell us that that's lateral continuity if we look at it from right there. Um, so sometimes it's a filling in, um, and sometimes it looks a little bit different, but that brings us to our next law. Um, I also call this one the disappearing law. If we ever ask you about two laws, um, and you're like, I just know. I just know that's why it is. I don't know a second law, I just know. Ask yourself if it's this one, because a lot of times lateral continuity is one that we just would consider common sense. And so your brain's going to go, I don't know, I just know. There's no name for that. Um, if you're thinking that, this is probably the law. Ask yourself if it's lateral continuity. Um, then which came first, the layers or the sticks I used to make those shapes? Um, that one would be the sticks because the sticks disturb the layers, so the layers have to come first. This is called the, layer, the law of cross-cutting relationships. So anything that cuts across something else is younger. So um, here we see that we have layers A, B, and C, and D kind of come and slices through there and cuts through. So D has to be the youngest. How we know D cuts through is that disappearing law of lateral continuity. So A used to be one piece. Uh, B used to be one piece. C one, used to be one piece. So we know D cuts through, not just because we know, but because lateral continuity says that used to be one piece. D came and sliced through there and shifted things around a little bit. It either pushed the right side up or the left side down. And so that is what um, makes that go together. So cross-cutting always goes with lateral continuity no matter what, okay? Um, so next we have a puzzle right here. We're gonna go through as an example. Um, so you might wanna go ahead and grab a piece of scratch paper and then we'll continue on solving this puzzle right here. 